Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the protest tradition in the state of Tennessee. And we have with us to talk about the earlier parts of the protest tradition in the state of Tennessee, Alana McLaughlin. And of course, Alana, let me uh, welcome you to the show this morning. Thank and you. I don't think that we have to uh, tell our audience uh, anything about you because this is your second time being with us. And the last time you gave us such an excellent show that uh, the uh, fans that you claim that you got out there actually wanted us to uh, bring you back. And of course, we're <laughs> delighted to have you. Uh, what we'd like to do to today, Alana, is to have you to talk about uh, what we consider to be the early protest tradition mm -hmm. in Tennessee. And we say that primarily because uh, quite recently uh, there was quite a bit of protest at the state legislature, and we want you to say something about an earlier period and talk about some of the individuals who were involved in protest earlier in the state of Tennessee. Well, um, I recently uh, saw in the newspaper that Bill had um, that um, uh, that some people were trying to uh, change the law that uh, some slum lords uh, have to go to the governor, mm -hmm. but uh, to uh, get a house and to mm -hmm. make one. But they're trying to change the law mm -hmm. to say that they can make a house and do whatever they want to without that. Mm -hmm. And personally, I think that's wrong because they can do bad stuff in the house if they make it. Mm -hmm. And personally, I don't want that for our mm -hmm. Tennessee and mm -hmm. Nashville and. Lebanon and Antioch. And so you would approve of the folks gathering in the state of Tennessee. And I say that because some uh, people have said that, well, this is not Wisconsin and therefore mm -hmm. we don't protest in Tennessee. But tell us about some of the earlier protests that people did in uh, Tennessee uh, leading to separation and segregation. Well, um, I recently, uh, another thing I saw in the newspaper was that, um, that they were uh, debating on if uh, if uh, the laws would let uh, college students carry guns on campus, and I don't really think they should do that. You don't like that law? No, I do not. Why, why would you oppose that? Because personally, if somebody was carrying a gun on there, and maybe they were a heavy drinker, mm -hmm. maybe they got mad for some unknown reason, mm -hmm. and maybe they uh, sh uh, sh uh, shot somebody, and that would be trouble for them, it would be trouble for the victim, and it would be trouble for Nashville, because that would start, it would start spreading from uh, everywhere on no. Mm -hmm. And so you're against uh, having weapons uh, on Cal College campuses, and uh -huh. I, I think that that's a good uh, position and a good sound position to take. But if it's on, like, if it's uh, self-defense, I would approve of that, mm -hmm. but if it's for bad use, I would mm -hmm. not approve mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, uh, there are a number of other things that have occurred uh, dealing with the teachers' union. As a matter of fact, we've got some folks who are coming up after you to talk about uh, the uh, teachers' unions and unions, period. A gentleman from the AFL-CIO, as well as another activist like yourself. Well, wh what do you think about the unions and uh, teachers in, in this time? Well, I recently heard from you that Bill Haslam, our current governor, was, try was trying to, uh, to, let to pay teachers more than their, Let's more than their, less than they're usually paying. So he's trying to cut down the salary of teachers. And because of that, some teachers may be very angry and some teachers may quit their position as a principal or teacher or guidance counselor. counselor. And uh, it would cut down um, the teachers and it will be bad for some students who uh, didn't have the education they needed because there were less teachers than expected. Now you're big on this education as an activist, and uh, people often say that uh, perhaps that, that little girl, uh, eight years old, might not be able to read. Why don't you tell me something about your reading experiences to dispel that idea that somebody else is giving you information? Well, reading is basically the one thing that helps you live. Re if you were in segregated times, such as my King's time, let's say that there was a black and white area of drinking water. If you didn't know how to read, you would not be able to read that you weren't supposed to go to the white area and you weren't supposed to uh, do that and God knows what the police would do to you. Mm -hmm. 
And, and of course, Lana, I thank you. And let, let me tell you how much we appreciate uh, your input in reference to this. And we've got a couple of gentlemen that will come on, and this is about the uh, end of this uh, segment. But we've got a couple of gentlemen who will come on and who will give us essentially the same kind of information, but it will be with, uh, within a different context. And they will talk about uh, the AFL CIO as well as the uh, African American Cultural Alliance. But we think that uh, the contribution that you've made by simply telling us what has gone on in reference to protest. Uh, you simply mean that protest is still alive and well in Tennessee, and we hope that many of the others will follow your example. Of course, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week uh, for another, another part of this program. Thank you. Into each life of the... The show for today.